Big news. The UAW has announced that it's reached a tentative agreement with one of the big three, and that is Ford. And the agreement reportedly includes a 25 percent wage increase through April 2028. Um, it also includes the uh, reinstatement of the cost of living adjustments, which were a real like a, a, a huge sticking point here. Um, what happened was that during the Great Recession, um, the workers were asked to take a pay cut and or a haircut, I should say, um, on their benefits and on something in particular called a cost of living adjustment, which allowed for their raises over time. And um, at, at, during that period, the bosses of these big automakers said, don't you worry, we will return and give you back the cost of living adjustments. Uh, just just let us get through this period of tumult and difficulty as uh as the economy was in shambles and the auto auto industry in particular was in such trouble. Um, this has finally, because of the UAW strength on this, they finally have cost of living uh, allowance slash adjustment back in their contract um, and these these wage increases. But let's let Sean Fain, who uh, I didn't realize Mac can do a killer impression of and was doing before the show. <laughs> Maybe we'll save that later. Um, speaking about what the uh, Ford agreement actually entails. UAW family, I'm excited and honored to be joined today by Vice President Chuck Browning as we announce a major victory in the stand-up strike. Today, we reached a tentative agreement with Ford. For months, we've said that record profits mean record contracts. And UAW family, our stand-up strike has delivered. What started at three plants at midnight on September 15th has become a national movement. We knew we were getting close, but we also knew the companies needed a major push if we were gonna make sure we got every penny possible in this agreement. So we took our strike to a new phase and hit the companies with maximum effect. On Monday, we called on our UAW family at Sterling Heights Assembly to stand up. That is Stellantis' biggest and most profitable plant. On Tuesday, our UAW family at Arlington Assembly answered the call and they went out on strike, shutting down GM's biggest and most profitable plant. Ford knew what was coming for them on Wednesday if we didn't get a deal. That was checkmate. On day 40 of the stand-up strike, we reached a historic agreement. As you know, in our union, the members are the highest authority. That means we have a process for ruling out the details of the agreement and making sure every member gets a chance to make an informed decision. So here are the next steps. Yeah, well, that's it. So he outlines the ratification from there, but that's kind of the meat of the announcement. Um, this is very good news. Uh, I do think that hopefully this puts pressure on Stellantis and GM to get this over with. And um, I, this, you know, is a, this is a headline over at Business Insider, by the way. The UAW's blockbuster yep. deal will see Ford workers' pay jump more than, excuse me, see Ford workers' pay jump more in four years than all pay rises in the past two decades combined, the union says. That's amazing. And I mean, I still always outsource this to the rank and file and what they have to say about their opinion of the gains that have been made. Mm -hmm. But I just want to... Um, kind of throw some shade on the people who felt that they could criticize the tactics of the uh, stand-up strike, the rolling strikes at different plants that were strategically um, yeah. strategically planned from the outside. Like, that's a conversation for the rank and file from the union uh, in the union. And, and uh, if the media participates in a conversation like that, it should be after a failure. To do it in the run-up and mm -hmm. actually the attempt when you're trying to get everyone to uh, achieve solidarity, I think it's despicable. And, like, you know, of course there's a lot of dum-dums who did it. Chama Sawant also, who I've had on Left Reckoning, and I, I appreciated that she, uh, you know, won power as a socialist. To, 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 to leave that position and then just do this media thing where you're... And... and, and 
Uh, I just think it was really well. It's it's, it's arrogant. Inappropriate. It's, it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate, and it's. I mean, when it's arrogant to assume that you know better than the people who are actually the workers in this instance, and who are the ones who are a part of the union. Like yeah. the you, you know, uh, this is different than critiquing uh, a piece of legislation. This is about a collective effort, and Sean Fain is popular among the rank and file. So waiting to see what they have to say about this but but so many of those people were just upset that um fain and uaw was closer despite not endorsing him uh closer to biden than uh um uh than the republicans and a lot of this is actually just crypto republican um uh, get out the vote or suppress the vote um operatives um trying to obscure an issue we we have a few more details that sean fain provides here let's take a listen for a little bit more that democratic process take its course but we also wanted to provide you with some key takeaways of this historic agreement our union has united in a way we haven't seen in years from the great lakes to the gulf of mexico our members came together to tell the big three with one voice that record profits mean a record contract Thanks to the power of our members on the picket line and the threat of more strikes to come, we have won the most lucrative agreement per member since Walter Ruther was president. Between wage increases, COLA, annual bonuses to retirees, and other economic gains, there is more value for our members in each individual year of this agreement than the entirety of the 2019 agreement. This deal puts more money on the table than the 2019 agreement four times over. So when we say historic, we mean it. We have won a 25% general wage increase over the course of this agreement. With COLA, we expect the top wage rate to increase by over 30% to above $40 an hour. Our starting wage rate will rise 68%. For decades, temps at the big three have been abused and exploited. Over the life of the contract, temps will see raises of over 150%. Some of our lower tier members at Sterling Axel and Rawsonville will see an immediate 85% raise upon ratification. UAW members at Ford will receive more in straight general wage increases over the next four and a half years than we have over the last 22 years combined. Wow. At ratification, Ford workers will receive an immediate 11% wage increase. That's almost equal to all of the wage increases since 2007 combined. So those were just some more of the details to uh, fill in how important and historic this is. If all of that gets ratified again, the agreement is just tentative. But yeah, I, I haven't, for instance, heard anything on the EVs and stuff like that. Yeah. So we'll see what the details are there. We will. We will. But I mean, um, I remember Ford's uh, CEO is the brother of Chris Farley. Did you guys know this? Um, yes, exactly. And he came on what well, it was some financial news network and was saying months ago that the this would bankrupt the company so so i think we should all be on the lookout to see if ford goes bankrupt now now that it's pl- paying its workers a living wage this was also the guy who like filled his diaper over sean fain not joining a meeting with like henry ford's great great grandson he was like he was mr ford's great grandson oh the blood and of he that come to the meeting nazi sympathizer wonderful yeah, yeah it's mm-hmm. like Doug, you your 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 brother died like 27 years ago and he's contributed he contributed more in his short life than you ever did in, in as the head of this company so yeah 